Hello student, welcome to NME 1201 Computer Edit Design. This is a 3D modeling activity using Autodesk Inventor for figure 7 question 3D. Let's start by looking into our 2D drawing. So please turn to page 7-65 and you'll be referred to this figure 7 question 3D. Now as usual, we will try to simplify this drawing to come up with the base feature. As usual, we will remove the holes, this diameter 30, the countersunks, this extra feature here, the secondary feature here, the ribs, the little cut here, and we are left with just the base here. Okay, this base is a little bit awkward because of the presence of this half ellipse here at the plan view. So, your final product will be this feature here. Alright, let's start. Go to File. Click on New. Under Matrix Folder, double click on Standard MM.IPT. We go into the Model Browser, found the left of the Autodesk Inventor. Click on the plus sign to expand the Origin Folder. Left click on the YZ plane. Press the Shift key and left click on the XY plane. This will select all three planes. Now you can let go your shift key, right mouse click and click on visibility. We have switched on all the three default planes in the origin folder. Now we will start by drawing this shape here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 outlines. So we will actually draw a bigger rectangle first followed by a smaller rectangle here and a single line to create this chamfer at the front now click on the XY plane a mini toolbar will, will be shown and click on create sketch we will click on the two point rectangle And this two point rectangle, the dimensions are 38 by 180. And then at the same time, from the, the rear of the 180 is actually 80 mm to the center of this secondary feature. So we will include this feature too. So go to dimension mode. We will dimension this as 38, press the tick button. The length here is 180, press the tick button. And lastly, from this here to the vertical of this vertical axis, we will enter as 80. Right mouse click, press OK. So here, our sketch is still green. These lines here are green. So what we need to do is just click, hold onto it, and drag it up, down, left, and right. You notice our sketch are only moving upwards rather than left and right. So we just need to constrain this line to the line here, the, the, the default line. So to constrain line to line is actually using the collinear constraint. Go to constraint, select collinear, and click them together. If you notice, I could not select the secondary, the, the second lines here. What we are missing is actually the project geometry. Click on project geometry first. Select this. You will see a maroon line gets projected out. And then click on collinear again and select them together. 
rotate your view and you will have a fully constrained sketch now go into the view cube and click on front view to centralize your view again we have done the larger rectangle now let's continue with a smaller two-point rectangle from this corner make sure there's a green dot select upwards and let's continue with the chamfer tool make sure do not select and do not click when you see a green dot here just make sure you're slightly away from that let's dimension it the height is actually 20 and from this vertical length is actually 140 till this end on the right and the chamfer here is 25 by 24 degrees so 20 140 25 and 24 degrees so the height is actually 20 from here till here it's 140 the length here it's 25 and the angle here it's 24 degrees and we have fully constrained sketches here all fully black now click on finish sketch go to your extrude tool select the profile required which is this two feature here okay let's just double check making sure that everything is correct and we would like to extrude this okay in the symmetry directions by 80 mm okay press ok next we will actually sketch out your half ellipse here okay we will have to create a close profile from here till here and then here we will use that as a extrude cut feature so let's begin from the top face of this uh, base view create sketch we will project this horizontal edge here and then at the same time this one two and three let's extend it further we just project the whole length throughout now under the circle there expand it and click on ellipse so the first selection is actually to the center make sure you do not click on this axis itself is this line itself okay we are not uh, creating your ellipse there just click somewhat away from that line click once now go vertically up click second time and lastly go to the right and click once more when you see a green dot we will now dimension it from here vertically up it's 20 now if you notice everything doesn't move as what you want but it's okay if you know this is a curve and we have a line we need them to be constrained together so we click on the tangent constraint here to here and here to here now we have formed a fully enclosed profile here we can click on finish sketch extrude select the profile required and then under boolean click on cut with a true all direction click on ok next we will sketch out this circle and a rectangle feature here okay the radius is r30 and the height is 50 
and we will extrude it out from this edge to this edge okay by symmetry of 60 mm let's begin from this plane the xy plane again because we would like that feature to be right centralized from the base view create sketch using this as your reference so let's sketch project geometry on this axis first expand your ellipse to select the circle okay you notice that when we have snap on to the projected edge the maroon color line will change will get highlighted so click once when it gets highlighted and then click on the two point rectangle and we will redraw them again right click press ok now press on your f7 key on the keyboard to slice your graphics okay let's analyze the bottom piece here it has been constrained fully now this feature here is not touching to this curvature so we need to we need them to touch together for that we click on tangent constraint from this vertical line to the circle right click press ok we will now add dimensions here will be 50 for this is r30 so pay attention here when you select the circle you notice the default is always in diameter for a fully drawn circle you can change it to the radius dimensioning by right mouse click dimension type and click on radius enter 30 if you notice our circle here is actually moving up and down okay we want this point the center point of the circle to be constrained to this line the horizontal line so click on coincident right mouse click select others and select the point next select on the horizontal line and we have a fully constrained sketch click on finish sketch click on extrude tool select the sketch one select the rectangular sketch two and then this time symmetry direction with a direction of 60 mm and press ok next we will create this rib first okay uh, the reason for that we uh, the reason for creating the rib rather than just this small extrusion cut right in the middle is because the extrusion cut ex exists on both the this feature here and the rib feature here is shown by these hidden lines therefore we need to create the rib first followed by then the extrude cut feature okay so the rib it's 60 mm from the center of this feature and it must tangent to the r30 and next it gets extruded by 40 mm okay so the rib thickness is 40 mm again we will begin from the xy plane the mid sec the mid plane of the both features here create sketch now we would like to draw a line from here till here okay and vice versa but however one of the line the ending must be tangential to this r30 circle okay so to do so we always begin from the opposite side of that tangent feature okay click on line okay make sure there's a yellow dot so that is snap on to this horizontal line and if you notice if you slowly move upwards towards the ten the, the curvature a tangent symbol appears okay there's none and when you slowly move move and you get this tangent symbol okay, automatically the tangent constraint has been added between this line 
the newly created line and your R30 circle. So click once. Okay, you see the tangent constraint has been added. So you are saving one small step. Next, we will dimension it from this vertical center of the R30 to this point. We cannot select it yet. So just hover over that point, right mouse click, select others, and click on the drop down menu and click points. Enter 60. Now, right click, press OK, press your F7 key to slice your graphical window. Next, you will just highlight all the edges other than your newly sketched line. Okay, because ribbing only require an open, open sketch, we don't need all of this. However, do not delete them. We just need to right mouse click and change it into construction lines. Okay, with that, Inventor will just ignore these lines. Okay, but we are still using them as reference to draw this line. Okay, a bit confusing, but yeah. Next, finish your sketch. Go to your rib tool. Okay, if it has not been selected, click on the profile, the line. Select this parallel to sketch plane and then flip the direction. Okay, you will notice there's a preview on your graphical window. Thickness wise, change it to 40. Let's rotate it slightly and we are happy with it. Press the OK button. We will now create the cutout. This cutout have a thickness of 16 mm and it is 20 mm above from this base itself. Okay, 16. 20. Begin from the XY plane again because we need the symmetry extrusion, extrusion cut. Now we will use the two point rectangle. From here, make sure the line has been projected for you. Click once and then we will drag it upwards. Press your F7 key. Okay, we need this curvature here, this R30 circle, to be tangent to this horizontal line. So, click on tangent constraint here and here. Next, we need this point to be constrained to this slanted line. So, point to line, the constraint is coincident constraint from this point to this line. Right click, press OK to end the constraint. And when you see a green line or green dot, we just click and drag. We notice we need the height of this here. So as mentioned just now, the height is 20. And press OK. Click on Finish Sketch, Extrude, Okay, select the sketch itself. Under Boolean, we change it to cut. And the thickness is 16 with a symmetry direction. Let's rotate your view to make sure that everything is correct. And if you're happy with it, press the OK button. Great, we are almost done. We are left with this diameter 30 hole. Okay, that is true all, and the countersunk hole, and lastly is your fillet here of R10. Okay, three more steps to begin with. Let's create the diameter 30 hole. So click on hole tool, select this plane as your starting plane, and select a curvature here as your cylindrical reference. If you notice the hole gets centralized to your R30, the circle. Okay, diameter is 30, fine, and termination is true all. Okay, press OK. Let's apply the fillet first, the R10 fillet. 
So click on fillet, change the radius to 10, enter, and now select the ages. Okay, press OK. Lastly, we will create this countersunk. Okay, the opening is at diameter 20, and the hole here is diameter 10. They have a center to center of 40 mm with a value of 25 away from this left side. So click on this face and left click on the create sketch. Go to line mode here to here. Right click, press OK. Dimensions from here to here 40. From this to this edge, it's 25. And lastly, we want it to be right in the middle. If you notice, our this point to the center here has a larger distance than the bottom point to the center here. So you know that these two ends, they are not midpoint or midpoint to this uh, horizontal line. So click on Coincident Constraint, select this green dot on the line, and then select the horizontal line. Why we are using lines this time is because line itself has two end points where in creating the hole, we can use these two end points as your insertion tool. Okay, This is an alternative rather than using the center points in your sketches. Finish your sketch, click on hole, select here and here. Under the hole type, it's still a simple hole. However, in the seat, change it to countersink. The opening it's 20, 90 degrees is fine, and lastly it's 10. The termination is true all, everything is correct, and press OK. Great. We have finished creating your Model for figure 7, question 3D. All the best. Please go and practice. Thank you.